So thank you. I, um, uh, I am the Vice President and CTO for the Associated Press, and um, certainly it's uh, an interesting job. It's coming after uh, the elections last night. A lot of activity, a lot of interest, um, a lot of discussion, and certainly that's sort of one side of the, the news business and the side of the Associated Press that people, people sort of understand. But we also have uh, a mission that uh, goes beyond sort of the journalism side of things. Uh, the AP is a not-for-profit cooperative. It was founded um, in 1846, and it's owned by the newspapers and broadcast uh, members, which means that we're sort of a, uh, it doesn't mean we can't make, a, we can't make money, but we're, we're, we're sort of there for uh, the common good. So we do a lot of work on sort of the coverage side and the news, but we also do a lot to sort of better the industry, um, newspapers and broadcasters and providing technology, um, in a shared way that they can leverage, they can take advantage of instead of building it themselves um, or anything that we could do in a collective way to help um, the, uh, the rest of the industry is um, sort of some of the things that we focus on. Um, we are a global news organization, which means we cover content or cover the news in multiple formats. We're doing text, photos, graphics, interactives, video. We take it in, we push it out, we transcode, we push things out in multiple formats, we bring it in in different formats. Um, so as far as the sort of the amount of technology that we sort of find ourselves immersed in um, is, is sometimes quite staggering. Um, now, with, with all that said, they're, they're currently, uh, if, you, if you have been living under a rock, um, you, you probably don't know this, but um, for, for most of the people sort of out there, you, you're probably aware that there are some real challenges for news publishers. Um, and uh, in particular, um, there are a lot of secondary markets and, and uses of, of news content that doesn't necessarily translate into any value for the people who are creating the content, which doesn't do well for sort of the bottom line for um, those folks, and they actually try to pay the people who are actually creating the news um, and covering it and providing it to everybody so that they can actually understand what's going on in the world. Um, and so uh, the AP sort of embarked and has been engaged for, you know, for a number of years, but. Uh, uh, in July last year, 2009, we sort of said, okay, look, we're going to go do something. And um, we said, we're going to go do something. And we uh, called that thing the news registry and um, re really set out some pretty ambitious uh, uh, goals and objectives for that. And, and this is a multi-phase sort of phase, uh, effort for the, for, the, for the AP and also for the industry. But the principle is simple, which is to really sort of give publishers unprecedented visibility into how their content's being used, where it's being used, and then allow um, them to manage um, their content, their usage rights, and then help them understand when it's being used, where it's being used, so they can actually go after um, those uses and, and turn them into um, uses that actually translate into uh, revenue. Um, that, that was sort of the mission that we set off in July of 2009 to achieve, and, and we're sort of at the stage where we've delivered um, some of that framework, and that's sort of the talk. Um, we're also moving into the next phase, which is really sort of enabling or transforming sort of the ecosystem around content um, and news content so we can actually provide efficient licensing collectively across um, the ecosystem and also help with um, new ways to make content accessible. So typically, people think about news content, and when you actually license news content, you say, hey, I want a feed of sports content, and you get a feed of sports content, and then it's up to you to figure out what to do with it. Um, and you pay for that. And it's really not a value-based uh, way of actually paying for it. And we're looking at new ways to actually say, look, you can license this content, and we'll provide the services. So you're paying for the value of not only the content, but also the audience engagement with that content. And that's, that's going to be some of the stuff that we're working on over the next year. Uh, for the news registry, um, what we were really talking about was a fairly ambitious um, uh, project in itself. At the time, there really wasn't anything out there. Um, and we really were sort of betting that uh, we had to sort of come up with something and come up with something very quickly. Um, we wanted something that was simple, non-disruptive, standards-based. Um, if possible, because if you think about collective action or 1,500 newspapers and broadcast people out there that are actually producing content and they were, we're going to ask them to do something to participate, we had to pick something that was going to be easy for them to implement. 
something that would be simple for them to manage and change their systems and so that we could get adoption. Because adoption, sort of coverage and understanding of content everywhere was going to be key. So we, we sort of laid out, okay, well, let's make it simple. Um, but we also said we really want to be aggressive in how we roll this out. Um, we have uh, a, a lot of sort of variability in that. We're going to be aggressive. We don't know how it's going to be adopted. We need to be sort of positioned when we come up with this architecture to be elastic in our scaling, not only from the adoption perspective, but also um, there's a lot of variability in how news is consumed. Um, but we also needed high availability, reliability. Uh, but uh, we really wanted to sort of come up with a, a framework and a project and a platform that really allowed the developers and the technology people engaged on this to do things in a rapid way. And we need to spin things up fairly quickly. Um, so the basic concept, this is, this is a probably you know, 100,000 foot level. But it really comes down to this. When news is actually consumed online, um, uh, we, we, we looked at and focused on text. Text content represents about 80% of the news content that's actually out there. Videos, interesting. Images are in, interesting. And certainly those areas that we're going to, to, um, to be adding in uh, to the news registry is the content that we support. But um, the 80% sort of number was one of the harder ones to actually um, tackle. So we went with text first. Uh, when, when text is published online, or articles are published online with uh, photos, um, it's put in a particular format, makes it consistent. There's all kinds of semantic web benefits, but really we wanted to have a consistent format that we could actually go out and actually look at that content uh, in an easy way. And it was an easy thing for them to implement. A user looks at that article. There's basic impression information that's collected. Um, and then we actually capture that usage information. So I looked at the article. I know that you looked at it. I know exactly which article you looked at. We can actually go out and say, hey, is this a new article? Is it something that somebody's already looked at before? Um, if it's something we already have in our system that we've already sort of seen before, then we'll just ignore it. We'll capture the impression information and carry on. If it's something we haven't seen, we'll actually crawl it. Uh, we'll parse it. We'll actually normalize the data, the actual story content. Um, we can index it and then do all kinds of interesting things off of the content, the usage information to actually provide the publisher information about that. We'll fingerprint it and then there's this entire ecosystem out there that isn't necessarily participating. So if I have a fingerprint or I have a view of this article, um, I can actually look at that and compare it with all the unstructured content that's actually out there on the web outside of the people that are actually participating in the news register. I can find all the uses of the same article um, outside of where uh, we currently are. And then there's a lot of work that we can do to enrich what we're actually finding and the data that we're getting to make it even more interesting and, and accessible to the participants, the publishers, so they can actually see different information about where the, where the audience is. Where is this audience coming from who's actually looking at this content? What's the content about? Can I show and provide information about how this consumption maps to people, places, organizations, events, topics? Um, can I actually sort of look at uh, the, the sort of the business aspects of this? Can I look at how this content is actually being used and who is using it? Do I know this, this place that it's being published on? Who operates that domain? Can you give me some relative information about how, um, how much traffic that domain actually has on a day-to-day -day basis. And then once we sort of get that, we may do some real-time roll-up and aggregation of the statistics. So this is my top article right now. Within the last 10 minutes, this article is moving. This one's high on a social um, uh, aspect. It's, it's the most common, or most shared, most liked, whatever. Um, I can roll that information up and give real-time feedback to the so the editorial room, the, the newsroom, so they can actually make coverage decisions. They can choose to put new journalists where you know, they didn't have a journalist or follow up on a story that's actually getting more interest. Um, and then once all that's sort of done, we can pump it into a data warehouse um, and expose it with a set of reports. So high level, yeah, a lot of stuff, very ambitious. Um, and it was, um, we came up with an infrastructure that really sort of, we tried to balance the concerns. Um, we, we, we put in place a secure and scalable architecture. We took the critical, the critical and specialized systems, like the data warehouse and the portal, and we put them in our data centers to keep the data secure. But then a lot of the sort of the collections and processing of the impression information, 
Um, we actually did a lot of that utility computing in the cloud um, from the beginning. Um, that was sort of the architectural decision. And then we leveraged a lot of off-the-shelf software open source to accelerate the deliver, delivery and sort of keep our costs down. Um, so it was a conscious effort at the beginning and one of the partners that we picked um, to help us along the way to give us the agility and sort of manage this environment was RightScale. Um, so just from an infrastructure perspective, uh, in our data center, we have the production data warehouse, the news registry portal, and the data archive. Uh, we have private cloud that we use for a lot of our development uh, QA and test environments so that we um, sort of manage those and manage those with the same sort of agility that everybody uh, is looking for for some of their production environments. And then um, over in Amazon, we have uh, cloud servers. We leverage S3 for storage, CloudFront, and, and CloudWatch. And then we also have sort of a hybrid approach to cloud. We do a lot of our compute on Amazon, but a lot of the storage and queuing and, and some of the workflow and the connections between the systems um, is done in Windows Azure. Um, one of the, the, the main approach for, for how we architected the solution in, um, on Amazon was that we sort of took a lending approach uh, where we would have multiple um, servers, the same image, doing the same kinds of work and to deal with sort of the availability and, and sort of making sure that we're always there. You know, if a server has a problem, it, it sort of becomes uh, unavailable. We don't really care. We just kill the lemming, spin up another one, and sort of continue the work. In the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about a billion transactions or a billion impressions a month, we don't really care if we lose, you know, 10,000, right? It, it doesn't necessarily change um, the, 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 the way that you would sort of look at the usage of the news content, because you're, you're really sort of trying to shine a, a, a flashlight in the dark. Um, so RightScale really helped us, if you sort of think about that, um, really helped us get up uh, running quickly with EC2 and, and managing what, uh, what is a, a fairly complex uh, environment. Um, I'll share some statistics later on, but we currently have about 130 instances at any given time running, and then it's high variability, as I talked about, so we have to spin up new server uh, templates uh, all, all the time. Um, we've been able to dramatically reduce deployment times. We went from sort of nothing in September of 2009 to uh, beta release in November, 70 days. Uh, we did a beta one in uh, April of 2010, and then the full production release in July of, of uh, 2010. Um, so we were able to take what were sort of, you know, more alpha, beta level products, which are a little bit more complicated when you actually roll out a production deployment, because there's usually some fairly significant changes to not only data models, but processes, and we were able to do that and actually use RightScale to help us sort of put up fully redundant environments and then cut over to the new environments and do the data conversion activity that we needed to do. Um, so some statistics, uh, our first beta was in 70 days, beta two in seven months, and production launch in 11 months. Right now we're running uh, anywhere from 800 million to a billion impressions, that's news uh, views, people looking at news content. Um, we're live on over 550 sites, new sites that are out there today, and uh, we'll be over 1,000 by the end of this year, uh, which represents about 70% of, of, of the ecosystem right now in the US. Um, we're tracking news content on uh, 50,000 domains, and we have over 130 Amazon instances. So. Uh, as I said, when I started, the first sort of phase of this was really sort of say, okay, how's my content being used? Um, give me that visibility collectively across all of, of the ecosystem and all the sites. And, and this is sort of the, the set of uh, capabilities that we've delivered on and provided uh, to the industry. And this is some of, the, some of the good work that the team's done as far as some of the visualization side of, of the portal in showing people both regionally sort of where the impression information's coming from, where the content's actually being used, specific KPIs or performance overview information about what are my top articles, what are my top domains, where's this content being consumed at, um, to very granular um, reports that actually dig into a specific article or a specific domain. 